games coming up. Should be a winnable game against Methacton on Friday. And you said you had a pretty winnable game against Coatesville on Saturday, and then a tough one against pretty much number one in the state, Cheltenham. Well, you said they were winnable. I didn't say that. I don't want to jinx myself. But uh, yeah, Sheltonham is, uh, you know, they're definitely, they're perennially a power. Uh, they have some good players, um, but we're looking forward, you know, we're improved. Uh, we're much, playing much better than we played the first time we faced Sheltonham. And, uh, you know, a team takes you lightly, a team doesn't come in focused, anything can happen. I, I really should have expected saying that it was a winnable game. I didn't figure, I, having a coach sitting next to me, I forgot that coaches don't like to admit the games are winnable, so. But I agree with you, definitely going to be, every game you play pretty much is a tough battle anymore as sports have really, you know, started to equal out a little bit. And of course, as I say that, Norristown extends their lead to 28. Jeff Bond, a three-pointer there. He has three, three-pointers tonight, 13 for him. And it's like you say, you know, sports have really equaled out. Kids, and in, in, even especially in a girls game, kids have really started to specialize in sports. Uh, you know, there, there was a time, especially, you know, when I came through, I may have played four sports in high school. You know, nowadays, it's rare to find a kid that'll play two sports because each sport has a schedule that's so demanding and the competition has just gotten so fierce uh, in guys' sports and, and even now in girls' sports. Uh, you're finding that kids are having a very hard time playing two and three sports uh, because, you know, if you want to compete for scholarship dollars and, and even playing time, uh, you know, you have kids out there who, you know, strictly love football. They don't think about basketball, baseball. They are football players or they're lacrosse players or volleyball players. And um, those are the kids that end up being a little bit better uh, than, you know, the kids that may play two or three sports. And, uh, and guy sports is almost unheard of. If you're a basketball player, you're pretty much a basketball player. Very tough unless you're blessed with uh, an unusual amount of size and an unusual amount of quickness. It's very tough to, to kind of cross over because you have so many kids who are your size, your speed, who are doing nothing but basketball while you're out catching passes. Three substitutions for Norristown right now. Chris Blake. The crowd favorite. James Stewart and Damian Solomon into the game. Marcus Green, Eric Wiggins, and Lee Fowler all taking a well-deserved break, and they'll probably be sitting for the rest of the night as they've all put their shirts on. And James Stewart with the rebound there. Coach, you alluded to the fact that, you know, demanding schedules for sports nowadays. What kind of stuff do you do in the offseason to get your team prepared for the season? Well, you know, with most sports, sports are almost year-round. You're, you're governed by your guidelines with, with the PIAA as to what uh, you can formally can and can't do. Uh, but, you know, once the basketball season ends, you'll have time for skills clinics during the spring. Uh, summertime is definitely devoted to summer camps and summer leagues. And then when you come back in the fall, uh, you're usually working on weight training, uh, pickup games to get the conditioning and the shooting eye back. Uh, we, you know, we almost go uh, year round, as, as the guys do. Uh, the guys program, some way, shape, or form, they're involved in basketball. It may not be with the school, but in some way, shape, or form, they're doing something year round with basketball. Still there from Wissahick, and they have numbers if they hurry. Childs will pull back a smart move there as Norristown got back quickly on defense. And you'll find that's pretty much a hallmark of, uh, of, of most of your upper level teams. They have a good portion or a good solid nucleus of players, uh, you know, who commit to the sport and really work on it year round. Foul there on number 55, James Stewart, his first. And of course, I would assume that you have a couple of, uh, a few athletes on your team that played maybe another sport. Yes, we shape do. During the off season, definitely. So now, Bill Richardson to the line. We've talked about James Stewart. You know, he played on JV this year a little bit, and he came back up to varsity with the injury to Lee Fowler. The, the one thing we've, we've decided is that if, if you have to box out against James Stewart, you're going to get tired real quick. Uh, yes, you will. It only takes a couple times leaning on him. And our mascot's doing a little dance for the fans. A block there inside. Vincent puts up a three. No good. Ball is rolling around and finally to Dean. 
Jamon Dean now finds Danny Evans. Evans dribbles it off his foot back to Wissahickon. It's a 71-44 with 2.23 left in the fourth quarter. Norris have really dominated the second half and pretty much dominated from, you know, from the opening tap. Wissahickon was up 3-0 and they really never saw the other side of the lead at that point. Bond shot was partially blocked. Ball hit the line, going to Norristown. And it's really good when uh, when your JV players get a chance uh, to move up and play varsity, because to be sure, the JV and varsity game, both in girls and guys, are, are, are very much played at different speeds. And uh, you know, a lot of times people understand it. There's an adjustment time. You can't just jump from JV to varsity and immediately do the things you did against JV uh, against varsity competition. You know, JV, you may have one or two very good players. Varsity, all five players can play the game to some level uh, and, and have to be contended with. Uh, and it's even more true with guys basketball. Stout now off the dribble. He went to feed it back to Vincent. And Dean now trying to go all the way. Crazy shot. Evans, his follow won't go. A little sloppy here from Norris down late in the fourth quarter, but kind of expected a little bit, you know, a tough game. And Damian Solomon, I don't think, knew what hit him. He hit the ground and he was trying to get up. Unfortunately, he had about nine guys running over him trying to grab a rebound. Well, he did the fundamentally sound thing. He tried to step in and take the charge, uh, which you love to see. Charges are, are, are lost arts in uh, girls and guys basketball. Nobody wants to come in and take the punishment. But uh, he tried to step in. But uh, that's the downside of it. If nothing's called, then uh, you stand a you stand chance of getting trampled. Well, it's, it's really easy to sit over here. And I realized that I was playing basketball a couple days ago. And I realized it when I was playing, because I haven't played in a while, that it's really easy to sit over here in this chair you're real safe unless the ball comes over here and then we duck. But uh, it's real safe to sit over here and say, well, you know, you really should have planted the feet there because, you know, at some point you've got to step in and say, okay, I'm going to take this charge and I'm going to do something for your team. But I saw somebody coming down the lane at me, and I have to say that I moved out of the way real, real quick. So and you're not, not, a, you're not, not an alone. easy thing to do. You're not alone. Evan's a strong drive. So that might be one of the toughest things to do in basketball, to, to step in and invite punishment and know that it's going to come and still do it. James Stewart is absolutely mugged right there by number 45, Dave Jeff. Everything in your common sense is telling you to get out of the way. Well, it's, it's human instinct, you know, when somebody's roaring down at you and they're screaming and they're bouncing a basketball at you, you're just going to say, Okay, go ahead, you know, you're screaming at me, go ahead, but at some point you do have to plant the feet and say, oh, I hope this doesn't hurt. So Stewart to the line now. This person won't go, Daryl Johnson, strong rebound. Stewart back to the hole, James Stewart, a nice job there. Two points for him tonight. 75-44, we're under a minute in this game. Feed to Bond. Jeff Bond puts up that high arcing three pointer and he's gotten it to fall a few times tonight. Couldn't get it to go there. Queen and his shot was partially blocked. The save by Dave Jeff. Good hustle there. 25 seconds left and still fighting. Richardson, the jumper, and it's good. Bill Richardson. He has five right now. So Norristown will extend their record to 14 and 2, I believe, tonight. Johnson with an up and down. A few of the fans starting to leave here now. Norristown, had another good performance. And Coach McGee, of course, they have a game Friday night against Methacton, and that appears to be an easy one for them. But of course, that hard schedule next week. So the final score here at Norristown High School, 75 to 46. Folks, we'll be back in a second to bring you a post-game wrap-up with myself and Coach Jackson.
back to Norristown High School. The final score is 75-46. Norristown 29 point winners tonight. Coach Jackson, what did you see tonight from the Norristown boys team that impressed you? Well, I, I thought they did a good job of staying focused in the face of, of what was not that great a challenge. Uh, you know, so many times you can turn a game that should be a fairly easy game for you uh, into a real struggle uh, by not coming out uh, and setting the tone early. And I think uh, tonight, uh, more so than some other nights, uh, they came out, set the tone, uh, and clearly got on top so that they didn't have a struggle or a, you know, a real physical drain of a game uh, down the stretch. What can Wissahickon really take out of this game? You know, you look up at the scoreboard and you see 29-point loss. What can they take out of it and take, see positive things tonight from them? Well, I think if they look at the videotape, they'll see there were some occasions where, uh, as we talked about early, they got a lot of shots. Uh, they had kids that weren't afraid to shoot. Uh, so, you know, they had the opportunity to get the shots. Uh, you know, the other thing you take out of it is you got to play and practice against one of the top teams in the state. Uh, if you have aspirations of playing in the district or state playoffs, uh, you know, this experience does nothing but help you. So let's run down the scores for you tonight. Leading scorer for Wissahickon was Jeff Bond with 13 points, and he had three three-pointers. Walt Childs with seven, Rob Vinson with four, Matt Brady five, Shreve Queen in two, Earl Stout three, Brian Finnegan four, Dave Jeff two, Dave or Drew Moore, excuse me, with two, and Bill Richardson with five. So balanced scoring from Wissahickon. For Norristown, their leading scorer with 19 points was Eric Wiggins. He's really established himself as their scorer this year. 17 for Marcus Green. And that's always nice to see 17 points from your point guard during the game. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of those were Warren jump shots. And uh, that becomes important. You have to have someone that can consistently knock down the J. Lee Fowler finished with 15 points tonight. Nice job from him at the center position. Seven points from Maurice Allen, four for Weldon. Two from Danny Evans, two from James Stewart, and Milan Dean came off the bench with nine points tonight. So, once again, we want to thank Coach Jackson for joining us tonight. A little bit of a spur of the moment thing. We want to wish him good luck. Thank you for having me. Future in the season. We want to thank everyone for watching us tonight. And we'll see you Friday night, I guess, for Norristown Methacton girls basketball. Because you will be here Friday night. And camp family night and middle school night. That's right. I forgot to plug that tonight. Okay. So, from Coach Roger Jackson, I'm Greg Fry. We'll see you next time on Norristown High School Basketball.